I don't really remember what year it was. 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018. When I had my raised garden beds, I had drip irrigation that I got from Drip Depot. Great place to get stuff from. Once I got rid of the raised beds, I still had all the drip irrigation stuff. And here it is, June, like 90 degrees outside. We've had a heat wave for, you know, a few days and going to last for a while. And just the weather is so unpredictable and the plants are starting to look kind of crappy. So I went ahead and repurposed all the drip irrigation that I had for my raised beds and stuck them out here. Now I've only got about half the garden done right now. But basically what I've got is starting up here in that corner, I've got a great big feed line, a half inch feed line that makes a great big U shape. And at the top of the U, I've got, I actually just used the original pieces that were set up for the raised beds. I've got a supply line and then I just teed off of those using the existing holes. They're spaced like every five feet or so. And each one usually had four supply lines. Some had five. And I basically just teed off of those and run my drip line right down my rows. Using the original stakes that you secure, secure them to the ground with. So these are a half gallon per hour spaced every six inch drip line. I did everything up here except for the peppers. So I've got all my tomatoes done, my onions done, all my corn is done. Um, it took me probably about two hours to do this. I still got to go get the battery for the controller that goes up here in the corner. So I've just kind of got the hose laying on the ground right now, but there's a controller that goes on the end of that hose right there. Uh, it's a timer runs off a nine volt battery and uh, you hook it up to a water hose you just turn the water hose on you say I want you to water the garden you know three Monday Wednesday and Friday for 30 minutes and uh, there's a chart that you get with the t with the controller that based on your volume of water you time how long it takes to fill up a five gallon bucket and that gives you volume, then it reduces it down. But I've kind of got to come up here and I still got to do my beans. I still got to do my watermelon. I'm probably not going to worry about the cabbages over there. I still got to do my potatoes, okra, sweet potatoes, and uh, cucumbers with the other half. I'll kind of show you like what I meant by... And I, I literally had like boxes of spare stuff. Stuff I never used when I originally did it. So it's not that big of a deal. Like there's some of the stuff I didn't use this time. These were in the old raised beds. But I've literally got just like boxes of spare stuff for drip irrigation supply line this right here is actually a non-drip line quarter inch i've got another controller in there i got all kinds of shutoff valves there's just but so the raised beds the part you see out there now the raised beds used to have this on it so it came in off the supply line raised up the height of the raised bed run across the raised bed and i basically took this out and just used the shutoff valve because I wanted to be able to control, like if I didn't want the corn to get watered this week or, you know, something like that. So there is a shutoff valve on each one of those supply lines. You can see the little green valve right there. I probably should have showed you the controller. They're actually kind of neat. They've got like a filter built into it. So if you got a lot of sediment, you can get them, you can get them to... You can get a uh, like an inline fertilizer attachment. I'm mentioning the controller because I know I have a spare controller down here. I have the spare controller because 
I bought all the stuff to run drip irrigation to the orchard the year that I got cancer and I just haven't used it. So this is the controller, exactly like the one I've got in the house. It's got like a little LCD screen here. Raise this up, it's kind of hard to do one-handed. There's the controller. These things work great. I used the one that I've got in the house for several years. It's got a 25 PSI restrictor on it because you can't do water, like your water hose pressure. You got to put a restriction on it. And uh, then there's like some filters. There's a little screen filter right there for heavy sediment. There's another filter down in here somewhere I saw. A couple of filters actually. But either way, it won't take me no time to get this finished set up and get this garden watered the easy way. Pick the garden hose up to it, set the timer, and walk away and just let it do its thing every day. Now, what I usually do is I set it up. If it does happen to rain, then I, I just shut the timer off for that week. So I only use the drip irrigation on the weeks that we don't get any rain. And we haven't had any rain in quite a while. So you can actually kind of tell the tomato plants are really starting to look kind of sad. Sad and droopy. So I get some water on these. They'll perk back up. The other thing is too, I don't want to water them during the daytime. Because it'll just evaporate. So what I'll do, I'll hopefully get the rest of this garden done today. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And then tonight, when the sun goes down, I'll turn this on, let it run, give it a good, good heavy watering. Then I'll shut it off, and uh, tomorrow they'll be all perked back up. Even the corn's starting to fall over. I haven't had time to heal the corn yet, but I noticed some of the corn stalks are falling over. And you go to stand them up, they just fall over because the ground's just so dry, like that right there. Anyways, I'll leave a link down in the description. I am not an affiliate at Drip Depot. I've just used their products for years. And uh, I think the products are way better than you than some of the ones I bought on Amazon in the early days. Um, but they've got drip irrigation set up for like raised beds, potted plants, um, gardens, traditional gardens like I've got here, small, medium, commercial, anything you want. And I was thinking now, it was a long many years ago before COVID, when I bought mine, I've got like about $200 in this and that's it. And when you look at how much time it saves. And the other thing is too, the reason why I've got it out here is I'm on a cistern. So when it's dry for a week or two at a time, the cistern can get pretty low. And when you're using a drip irrigation system, you're not wasting water. The water's literally going on the plants and not going in between the rows and places like that where it don't matter. It's literally going right on the plants. So I can conserve water during periods of drought, but still keep the garden watered without affecting my cistern. Because when I used to come out here and hand water it with a garden hose and just spray it, I'd run out of water all the time. And it's just because that's just a waste of water. Um, so the drip irrigation works great. Anyways, I suggest if you don't have one, look into getting it. And uh, thanks for watching. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.